Så, nu är jag backstage här med Monster Truck och det kommer bli ett av årets bästa gigget på Sweden Rock, det är jag helt övertygad om. Så nu vänder jag på kameran och så får vi prata med dem, eller med han lite granna, så får ni höra, okej? Okay. I just told the people at Ginsta that the, I'm looking forward to the gig because I think it will be one of the best gigs at the show. And I'm not telling that because you are here, but uh, I think your music, your type of music is done for, for uh, stage. It's stage music, isn't it? Yes. Do you consider yourself as a live band? We absolutely do. I mean, we try, we're trying to get better at making albums. I don't think we're bad at making albums. No, 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 no. no. But I think we are much better on the stage. Yeah. Um, but yes, with every new album, we're getting better in the studio. We're learning how to make our songs sound good yeah. for um, albums and records. Yeah. And and yeah, it's it's something we're excited about doing. Yeah. But we definitely feel we're better on stage, yes. Are you one of the guys that write songs in the band? Um, everybody writes um, a little bit. The riffs mainly come from Jeremy and John. Yeah. And then they will come in different degree of development. Sometimes it's only just one riff. Sometimes it's a couple riffs, a verse. But we always bring it together. We have a studio at home, so we will record the idea. And then we'll take it home at night and then everyone will listen and maybe we'll come back the next day and change the arrangement of it um it's a very collaborative process once the riffs come to it yeah. but the riffs always start with them because i remember the first album we did you scrapped the first version didn't you yes we did that's um, that's a quite hard decision to make isn't it yeah i mean but we were again we were very new at making albums then and we went um We went to Los Angeles and went in a big studio with okay. a producer who had a name, who maybe... Who, who was it? Um, his name is Kevin Agunas. Okay. He owns a... Um, I forget what his label is called, but it's more of an indie rock. Was, was it a po too polished or...? Um, no, it wasn't polished enough. Uh, he, he had a two-inch machine, uh, it was a 16-track, two-inch tape machine, and we thought we would just go in and you know play live off the floor and and be and just finish the record in two weeks and it'd be done and it'd be great and sound like raw old okay, school that, record okay. but we uh realized that we weren't good enough um as a band to to cut everything in one take and i and we were only keeping one take of everything and if we liked it we couldn't make another another version of the song we would If we didn't like it, we would have to record right over it, and we couldn't pick and choose. We couldn't do any overdubs. The, no. Which, if you're gonna do tape, back in the old days, they would have many reels of tape, yeah. and you could do overdubs, and you could cut in parts, and but that takes more time and money, which we didn't have, so we quickly realized we weren't getting what we wanted um, from just playing straight live off the floor. No. Um, and so, And then once it was mixed and we had some time to listen to it, we passed it around to different members of our team uh, and everyone kind of decided it didn't sound like we, no. we I, sound. So. I can understand that because your, your music is too much a punch in the face. Than exactly. That. We wanted it to sound bigger yeah. and louder and, you know, especially with only 16 tracks yeah. and no dubs, not, not dumping it down. Your drums are only maybe five to eight channels and then your guitars are only two channels and you know nowadays people are made to hear rock albums that have hundreds of tracks and yeah. so we you know now on subsequent recordings we would have 25 or 30 different drum tracks and mm -hmm. uh and then again same with guitars and basses and that's how modern rock sounds and if we were yeah. wanted to sell it in the modern rock market, we felt it needed to sound bigger and we had to take more of a modern approach to recording. So mm. that's why we had to redo the first one. So. For me, your type of music, it's, I shouldn't say unique, but I really love the blend between the old school uh, uh, Jacksonville, Florida sound, yep. like with this Linus Skinner people, yeah, together combined rocks. with this modern rock stuff. I, I, it's. Uh, something that's really cool to yeah. have and uh, that's not typical Canadian music for me. No, absolutely. Well, we, we don't listen to Canadian music. There's no real... 
Canadian rock band. I mean, everyone always could talk about Rush. That's the whole last first band. And they Saga were. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, but that stuff is coming into the '80s, and yeah, it's yeah. more a little more prog rock. It's not. It's a little more hair metal. Like, like it's yeah. there's our favorite classic rock is you know Leonard Skinner and maybe yeah. like Grand Funk Railroad, and then the British stuff like okay. Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple exactly. and Black Sabbath and. The, not there was no Canadian bands from those eras, like no. from the late '60s. Max Webster, Max Webster, sure, but that's even a little has more of an '80s type sound. Yeah. Especially Kim Mitchell was kept moving towards that yeah. direction, and none of that sounds like that stuff, like Leonard no. Skinner or um, any of that old vintage, like early '70s no. rock, which is really what we see as the most classic rock yeah that's what you are exactly so we don't really listen to i mean we listen to that early 70s stuff late 60s early 70s so um that influences us a lot more than anything that came after that which is when the canadian rock bands kind of got big rush didn't yeah. get big till the end of the 70s mm. and that's kind of beyond the era of music that we truly loved and we try to model the band after yeah so you know, we have not, no Canadian influences really. It's all American and British rock mostly. So, um, yeah, I mean, and then the modern sound comes from being modern day people. We don't, we, you know, we, we've been in punk bands and metal bands and these kind of bands before okay. this. And we, you know, this is how we've learned to record. We've learned to record in a modern way. We tried the old school one on the first one, yeah. and like I was saying, and it didn't work for us. So, mm -hmm. um, and then also, if you want to sell your music in a modern day uh, music market, mm -hmm. you have to be aware of the modern thing, and you know the way that they master records nowadays is very different than back in the old days. So, yeah. and we're not against the, these modern ways of doing it. So that's how you get the mix we love those old school sounds and the you know the guitar tone and my keyboard tones um they're very much influenced by what guitars and keyboards sounded like long ago mixed with a new production and mixing mastering mm -hmm. methods so it's kind of a we're taking everything that we like of the whole spectrum of rock and putting it together yeah. and this is how it comes out because you're you're quite big in Canada now. The album entered number eight. I looked before. And it was actually number three. Number three. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. That's um, cool. It was Adele was number one, and uh, Simple Plan was number two. You don't beat Adele. No, you don't beat Adele. No, <laughs> nobody beats Adele. No. And but but, but we did beat Justin Bieber. Our our on the first week of sales. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> overall, I think he has sold many more records than we have. Yeah. No. Yeah. But, um, However, we do, yes, we do okay in Canada. But if you drive the car, um, you know, two hours below Canada, you enter the US border. Yeah. Why, uh, is that something you're looking forward to, to kind of break into? Because um, it, I don't do you really work a lot of it? We, we just spent six weeks there before this tour. We were in America. Um, it was our first time we went to California. Okay. Um, and then we went out to across the south. We'd never been to the southwest. And because it's such a great music for that part of. It is. However, America is so big. Yeah. There's like 350 million people. It's almost like all of Europe combined into one yeah. place. And every part of California is so much different than the south, like Florida yeah. and you know Louisiana and Georgia, and yeah. which is also so different from New York and the, and the Northeast which is different from uh, the Midwest, and then you have the whole yeah, Northwest. It's, it's like 53 countries. It's unbelievable. There's so many people, people are different everywhere, they speak differently, like it's, so it's it, it's such a huge market to, to try to put a song on the radio, cost so much money, yeah. um, and to try to sell it, to have a, to have a record company um, market and promote it, it's the same as the radio, it costs so much money. So the bands that succeed in America are the ones who have been working on it for a long time. Yeah. And we haven't spent as much time there um, because we started having a little bit more success in 
uh, the UK and Germany and the rest of Europe. Yeah, I saw that you shot it in Germany. That's fine. Cool. Yeah, I mean, and to be honest, we enjoy uh, the European uh, society better mm -hmm. than we enjoy American society. Yeah. So we prefer coming here. So whenever we would have an option of a tour to come to Europe or to go to America, we would always choose Europe. And you're going here with Nickelback. Yes, we are in uh, September and October of this year. We're is that because you're friends with them? Because it's not really, really the same type of music, even if it's, uh, yeah, your cousins. Exactly. We we have become friends with them. We did um, a tour of Australia with them last year. Yeah. Um, we have the same. We have some same agents as them. Yeah. Um, and uh, that is how they were introduced to us, and they became fans of us. Um, during the last album and we had been working hard to get on tour because we just want to play yeah. as big of shows as we can and yeah, of course um, you know their shows are really big and yeah. you know there's 10,000 people every night and it's good to, to, to uh, play game for these people exactly so um, and the, the way that they treat their crew and us and everybody else on tour is almost better than anyone I've ever seen. Nice like to it, hear. It's very comfortable and there's really, really nice people. Um, and the, honestly, the show is really well done. Like it's it's such a high caliber of sound and lights and uh, just production in general. It's, it's really something we can learn a lot yeah. from. Um, so it kind of almost doesn't matter as much that the sound isn't as much the same it's still loud guitars exact and you know maybe only half the crowd yeah. might like us but that's yeah. still a lot of fans we yeah. could gain so yeah all so, of those things make it what very I, worthwhile what I, one of the best things i really like with your albums is the thing that we used to be when i grew up that is ar it's album oriented rock your it's not hit driven records uh, I really like listening to the whole albums and that's cool. something do you think it's these days when everything is digital and you can stream music and download mm -hmm. when everything is single driven do you think that is are you are you an album guy yourself uh, it's funny I used to be an album guy very much so um, but nowadays I really do listen to a lot of music and this is just me personally the rest of the band is different and I don't really know their opinions yeah. but we all do our favorite classic albums are we still love to listen to the whole album and that's kind of what we were raised on even yeah. even when we were teenagers getting into punk and metal you would listen to the whole thing because it was on a tape and you had yeah. to maybe you would rewind but we were still of the generation where you would mostly listen to the whole thing but however we do try to write singles and like all the best albums are kind of a mix of singles and album exactly. tracks so and you know even I think if we did try to write a whole album worth of singles, they wouldn't all be singles. No. And you, we, you, we like to change the pace of of the album for the listeners. So we are very album minded, no. although we do try to have singles because that's how you sell your band. Um, so yeah, we're it's kind of an album band by default. Does that's who, what <laughs> generation we're from? Yeah. Yeah, I, do, I see here I gotta run soon, but the last question, uh, what can we expect today? It's a, uh, is it 45 minutes of pure...? Uh, no, we were, gonna, we we're gonna slow it down just like we would on an album. Uh, we, we do, some of our favorite songs to play are our slower songs. Yeah. Um, that, like For the Sun, for example, is a, is a long song that kind of, you know, seven or eight minutes long. Cool. And, it builds slowly and it becomes furious. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, cool. One of my things here at the festival. Yeah, yeah. cool. Well, we and we have another one off the new record called Black Forest that's uh, driven by a Rhodes piano that I play, mm -hmm. which I'm I'm very excited to to, to play these kind of songs because I never played any piano on the first album. No. So there's some. You're a multi-instrumentalist, aren't you? Well, I, I don't know. Keyboards, people just put keyboards in one yeah. box and say that. I mean, I mainly play the Hammond organ yeah. um, with a little bit of a martial sound to it, but... But you I, can play the guitar as well, can't you? I can a little bit. Yeah. However, I don't in Monster Truck that. No? Um, 
Yeah, I've, I've always played lots of different things. I was in a in a band at home where I played the banjo, so yeah. I don't know if I'm very good at it, but I like to play and it's fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, at least I'm being a keyboard player, there's so many great keyboard sounds. Um, I, when we were writing songs, I would just have, hear the sound of a piano, and so I would start playing the piano, and I'd be like, oh, that sounds cool, let's, let's do that. And, so um, th I think that's kind of grown the sound of the band, mm -hmm. at least from my perspective. It's it's more fun for me to play other sounds than just the Hammond all the time. Um, so I hope we can continue doing that on yeah. further records. And I know I I plan to, and we'll see if these new songs that we write will yeah. include that. I hope more people will uh, come across your music uh, because you're worth it. And this is music that is perfect for Swedish people, oh, you know, cool. or as you say, European people. Yeah, you know? sure. So I'm really happy we could meet up because I think this will, uh, yeah, I think people here will love it when they hear oh, it. Oh, so. cool, man. Thanks so much. That's That means a lot. We, yeah. I mean, I don't like to lump any of the European countries together. It may, no. you know, sometimes we talk about Europe as a whole. It not. But Sweden is, for me, Sweden is special because my brother is Swedish. Okay. He's married to a Swedish girl and he, they live in Falkenberg on the west coast. All right. And so I've just been visiting them a few days and, you know, I came over for their wedding and we have played some shows in Sweden. So yeah, you've been here. I don't loop. I don't like to bunch it in with the rest of Europe. Sweden okay. is more special to me. So okay. I, if we would do well and the Swedish people would embrace it, that would be a lot more special for me. Yeah. But yeah, we definitely like to treat each country as its own. So. Um, we're really happy to be here. This festival is organized really well, yeah. and um, I love the style of bands that are here. It's got a more classic yeah. rock feel than yeah. the rest of the the European rock festivals. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully you know, the people of Sweden do yeah. enjoy yeah. enjoy us, and it keeps to grow. It's a pity that I have to run, but uh, I have another meeting. Oh, yeah. it's okay. I got. I gotta go yeah. up on stage and. Yes, you will be there in one hour or something. Yes, I think okay. so. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. See ya.